Now it's time to put our knowledge of roots to use in order to solve radical equations, which are just as much fun as they sound. Let's start off with a simple example. If we take an equation like this, the square root of x equals 9, uh, this is something you can solve just by staring at it for a little while. If you think about it for a bit, uh, you'll figure out that 81 is the solution here. And the reason for that is because the square root of 81 is equal to 9. But suppose we had something a little more complicated in our equation, like the square root of x minus 3 equals 9. Again, this is something you could probably get if you stare at it long enough, but it would be nicer if we had a formal way to solve this and get a proper solution. The key here is going to be to use the rules of exponents and the way that they interact with radicals. So for instance, in this case, we see that we have a square root that we are working with. And so if we take our equation and we square both sides, on the right-hand side, 9 squared is going to be 81. And on the left-hand side, the square and the square root are opposite operations of each other. They cancel off. And so you're just left with x minus 3. Once you have x minus 3 equals 81, it's easy to solve. You add 3 to both sides. And you conclude that x is equal to 84. Let's look at another example now with a different power. For instance, let's say we had the third root of k plus 5 is equal to 4. We'd like to solve and figure out a value for k that will work. In this case, we can notice that the index of our radical is 3. We're doing a third root. And so if we raise both sides to the third power, the rules of radicals will allow us to cancel the radical off. So raise the left-hand side to the third power and raise the right-hand side to the third power. Third roots and third power cancels off. k plus 5 is equal to 4 to the third is 64. And then the last step is to subtract 5 from both sides. k equals 59. These three examples were pretty straightforward, but they're not always this simple. So let's now go through some steps that you can follow to solve any equation of this type. Here are the steps for solving an equation that involves radicals. Um, let's use them to solve this equation, the square root of x plus 65 minus 9 equals x. The first goal is to isolate a radical, which in this case means that we want to get this square root of x plus 65 by itself. So for step one, we're looking at the square root of x plus 65 minus 9 equals x. To isolate the radical, we need to add 9 to both sides, which leaves us with the square root x plus 65 equals x plus 9. Now that we've got that radical by itself, it's time to move on to the second step, which is to raise both sides to a power to eliminate a radical. Now in this case, we have a square root, and so we're going to raise both sides to the second power, because that's what will cancel off, a square root. If we had a third root, we would raise each side to the third power. So second power here, second power here. On the left-hand side, things look nice. The square root and the square cancel off, and we're left with x plus 65. On the right-hand side, you have to be careful. This means x plus 9 times x plus 9, which you would FOIL to get x squared plus 18x plus 81. This brings us to step 3. In some problems, you will have multiple radicals that appear, and so you will have to repeat steps 1 and 2 in order to get rid of all of the radicals in the problem. In this case, we only had one radical in the initial problem, and so going through those steps once is enough to get rid of all the radicals. So for our purposes, step three is already done, which means we can move on to step four. Now that we've gotten rid of all of our radicals, we have something that is of a form that we are familiar with. It's an equation that we can solve by factoring. 
If you're going to solve by factoring, you need to get zero on both sides of the equation. So in this case, the easiest way to do that is to subtract x from both sides and to subtract 65 from both sides. What that leaves us with is 0 on the left-hand side equals x squared plus 17x plus 16. This is something that we can factor on that right-hand side. 0 equals, this would factor into x plus 1 times x plus 16. From here, we can split into the two possibilities, either x plus 1 equals 0, or x plus 16 equals 0. Solving those gives us x equals negative 1, or x equals negative 16. And that brings us to the last step of checking solutions. When an equation involves radicals, you can sometimes produce values that look like they might be solutions but don't actually work when you plug them into the original equation. Those are called extraneous solutions. And so what we're looking at here with x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 16 is our list of potential solutions. We have to check those in the original equation to see if they work. So over here on the left, let's check x equals negative 1. If we plug that into the original equation, we end up with the square root of negative 1 plus 65 minus 9 equals negative 1. Negative 1 plus 65 is 64, so that's the square root of 64 minus 9 equals negative 1. The square root of 64 is 8. 8 minus 9 equals negative 1. That checks out. So that tells us x equals negative 1 is a valid solution to this equation. Now let's do the same thing to check the other possibility, negative 16. So if x equals negative 16, what we get is the square root of negative 16 plus 65 minus 9 equals negative 16. Negative 16 plus 65 is 49. Square root 49 minus 9 equals negative 16. And the square root of 49 is 7. 7 minus 9 equals negative 16. Now this is not true. And what that tells us is that the negative 16 we ended up with on the right over here is not actually a solution to our equation. It's an extraneous solution. Let's do a couple more examples here to round things out. Um, in this first one, we're looking at the square root of x plus 2 plus 10 equals x plus 12. Again, we want to try and solve for x. The first thing we'll need to do is isolate the radical. So we can do that, in this case, by subtracting 10 from both sides. And that leaves us with square root x plus 2 is equal to x plus 2. Next, we're going to square both sides. Square on the left, square on the right. On the left-hand side, everything works out nicely. We just get x plus 2. On the right-hand side, once again, you have to FOIL here, and you end up with x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now we've eliminated all of our radicals, and so we don't need to repeat any steps. We can go straight on to step four, which is solving. In this case, we can subtract x from both sides, and also subtract two from both sides. And that leaves us with zero equals x squared plus three x plus two. The right-hand side here factors nicely into x plus 2 times x plus 1. And that's going to lead us to two solutions. If this equals 0, then x is equal to negative 2. And if this equals 0, then x is equal to negative 1. 
And lastly, we need to check these two possibilities. So first we'll check if x equals negative 2, what happens? Well, that would turn into the square root of negative 2 plus 2 plus 10 equals negative 2 plus 12. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. 0 plus 10 equals negative 2 plus 12 is 10. 0 plus 10 equals 10. That checks out and tells us that negative 2 is a valid solution here. Now let's check the other possibility, x equals negative 1. If we plug that in, we get the square root negative 1 plus 2 plus 10 is equal to negative 1 plus 12. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1, and the square root of positive 1 is positive 1. 1 plus 10 equals negative 1 plus 12 is 11. 1 plus 10 equals 11, that's true. And therefore, this solution is also valid. Both of these are valid solutions to our original equation. Now let's see if we can cram one more example in here. We have the third root of 4x minus 6 minus 2 equals 0. So the steps are going to be the same. First, we will want to isolate the radical. And in this case, that means adding 2 to both sides. And that leaves us with the third root of 4x minus 6 equals 2. Next step, we will want to raise each side to an appropriate power. And in this case, since we have a third root, we're going to raise each side to the third power to cancel it off. Third power on the left, third power on the right. On the left, we just get 4x minus 6. On the right, 2 to the third power is 8. We don't have any more radicals, and so we can go straight to the solving step. Uh, in this case, what we can do is add 6 to both sides, and we end up with 4x is equal to 14. Divide both sides by 4, and we get x is equal to 14 over 4, which is 7 over 2. And I will leave that one for you to check, but it will turn out to be a valid solution to the equation.